Salutations, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland. Here I am in Putney on the south bank of the River Thames. Well, I'm on a jet to be more precise. To my rear, you can see Putney Bridge, which was built in 1885. But this is not about architecture and engineering. Putney Bridge is where the university boat race begins. The university boat race has been going for almost 200 years. It's the um, oldest uh, university boat race in the world. It's between Oxford and Cambridge. Uh, so it started off at Henley on the River Thames. That's some miles south of um, south of Oxford. Occasionally they raced uh, near Cambridge on the on the River Cam. And then in the late 19th century they came here. And so every Palm Sunday they race here. They race from here um, to uh, Chiswick Bridge. So it's about three and a half miles. They cover that distance in around 20 minutes. And to begin with, obviously, it was the boys' cruise only. And these are eights, as in there are eight oarsmen, but they only have one oar each. Okay? And they're an eight as opposed to an octuple. An octuple, they'd have two oars each, be doing it like this. But an eight, they do it this way two hands on one oar, or indeed that way, depending on your stroke side or bow side. And obviously, there's a, there's a coxswain, or just cox for short, C O X. He steers the boat, sitting in the back, who was chosen to be a very light guy because there's extra weight for them. He has to navigate. Stroke as near as Tim. So they begin here around about 12 noon. That was that. Um, and when the First World War broke out, they did not race until the war was over. They did not race in 1919 because the war was officially still on until the Treaty of Versailles was signed on the 28th of June that year. Likewise, when the Second World War broke out, again, the race was not run until the end of the war. Might have kept morale up, but it would have been a sit and duck for the Luftwaffe if they were here. And on that day, there'll be um, thousands of people on the bridge, thousands of people here on the north, or sorry, on the south bank, under the north bank. And you have either, um, uh, I think it's called Middlesex Station near the north bank, or Surrey Station near the south bank. Because to the north of the river, that county was Middlesex, to the south, that county is uh, Surrey. Really, this bit of Surrey is absorbed in London. It's not considered to be Surrey anymore. Middlesex as a county was abolished in about 1880, all absorbed within Greater London. So they swap over. If Oxford is Middlesex Station this year and Cambridge is Surrey Station this year, then they'd swap over the next year and swap back. And it keeps alternating to balance out any advantage or disadvantage there may be for the stream being faster this way or that way. Incidentally, they are, they are flow, they're rowing against the current. They've lo they're rowing upriver. Now the Thames is tidal, and that's uh, important to do with the um, timing of the race because obviously the seawater comes in through the Thames estuary right up to Teddington, which is about um, 15 miles as you navigate along the Thames. As the crows fly, it'd be, it'd be much shorter than that. So the level of the Thames goes up and down dramatically through the days. So it's mostly seawater, even though we're actually on a river. Um, what else? And then um, women were admitted to Cambridge in 1874, to Oxford in 1878. And after a few decades, they started rowing as well. So, but the, the women's boat race didn't begin until the 1930s. It wasn't a serious thing at all at first. There were more and more women doing it, coaching for longer and longer hours. And they began to take uh, their rowing just as seriously as the boys. So rowers are quite fanatical about their sport, getting up at 5 a.m. Now, um, I can't remember who said there's nothing as, as fun as, as mucking about on the river. Maybe it was Jerome K. Jerome, three men in a boat. But larking around the river, if it's five o'clock in the morning, in the, in the drizzle of sleet, is not quite so much fun. And so they're rowing up in this direction, and there, there are bends, and there's quite tactical when they're gonna um, row harder, when they're gonna go relatively easy, trying to get in front of the other crew, things of that nature. Um, what else do they need to think about? No, thank you. Um, uh, when they're gonna do a burn, when they put their all into it and, and do a very dramatic uh, effort and then they might pull ahead and really demoralize the crew. But they're very high level, these people. They're internationals, often they're Olympians. Um, so they don't get demoralized, they row to the very end. At lower level, if they get a few lengths behind a rowing crew, they more or less give up and end up, end up losing by a very long way. So the coxswain has to steer them the right, right way and be aware of where the, the current is, is faster and slower, things like that. I'm no oarsman, probably blatant to you. So um, they're training obviously seven days a week and they're doing weights and they're jogging and things like that. They have a special diet. They're often allowed to drink for weeks before race. If they're caught smoking, they're off the crew. They don't be postgraduates, certainly the males, because they're in their mid twenties. That's when their maximum height, maximum strength and, and muscle tone and things like that. So the, the, the female rows, they tend to be a bit younger in their early twenties when they're in these crews. 
Um, very few of them are British, so the best rowers from Germany, the United States and so on, they get in these crews. They must be in Statue Pupillare. They must be currently studying at Oxford and Cambridge to be in the crew. Um, and they're not necessarily the best uh, rowing eights in the United Kingdom. They just happen to be Oxford and Cambridge. That's why it's broadcast live on BBC television. Over on the other side of the Thames, you will see um, Bishop's Park. That was the Bishop of London's residence was in there, and that was his personal park. They moved out in the 1960s, it's now a public park. But there are thousands of people there watching it, it's on screen. So there's a boys race, and then there's the girls race. However, about 10 minutes after the boys race starts, then the seconds start, because there's this, um, there's sort of like a second eight, and they're, they're here, not really to race, but in case, whilst they're lowering the boat into the water of somebody, somebody twists his ankle and couldn't row. What are you gonna do, cancel the boat race? No, this is the most important boat race in the world. So they've got to have a reserve who can step in at the last minute. And once the crews are off, they're successfully racing, okay, the seconds, they can race too, but that one doesn't count. But they come all this way, dressed up, nowhere to go. Well, they've done all this training, they do let them have a race as well. Likewise, the women's crew, they race after the men's are finished, and about 10 minutes into the women's race, then the women's second eights, they start to race. Again, that doesn't count, but they'll come all this way. They're in their rowing gear, they're ready. All right, we'll let them row as well. Um, famously, in about 1980, I think the Oxford crew sank. So much water coming over them. When I watched in 2016, it was the, um, uh, the Cambridge women. Their boat became flooded. They were told to row non-competitively. Um, the marshals were signaling their red flag, suggesting go to an island. Way back in 2009, an Australian chap got into his sub-aqua gear and was trying to disrupt the race, but uh, he got arrested, sent to prison for that. He was eventually deported. He appealed because his girlfriend was British. He had a baby born here and said, no, you should have thought about that before you disrupted the race. It's very dangerous. You could have been killed. You tried to ruin an event, which millions of people were going to enjoy on television. So that is the university boat race. Very worth seeing it. It's a completely informal event. Just wear anything. You don't have to pay to get in. Just anywhere up and down the banks of the Thames. Don't expect to be able to park here, the, 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 the throng will be very dense. Get here an hour before to get a decent spot to view it. There are boats and whatever rowing officials are going up and down and watching and things like that. So you can't just get on those if you want to. Further along the river, there's several boat houses. The London Rowing Club and um, Imperial College Rowing Club and various schools. They've got their boat houses up here. You can hire them out for parties and so on. Well, that's probably enough about the university boat race.